So what's the future of business education? Well, we're joined now by Della Bradshaw, the business education editor for the Financial Times. She's in Singapore for a GMAC conference held here at NUS. What would you say are, say, the three key trends at the moment within business education? I think there's two or three of those. I think one is um, globalisation, that is um, students looking um, outside the home country for um, education. I think that's true everywhere, with the exception of perhaps of the US. Um, and with that, we've seen quite a fragmentation of the market, I think. What we're now seeing is that in different markets there are different degrees and, and business schools, I mean NUS is a classic example, has more than an MBA, it has lots of different degrees um, catering for different people. The, the one that really interests me is the move towards online learning and, and particularly these free courses that we're seeing, um, you know, these massively open online courses. Um, and um, what interests me is how that's going to change um, the power structures and the um, uh, and just the profitability of, of, of business schools. What about online education and cloud education? We're seeing schools putting more and more of their content online and on knowledge sites. But um, do you see this continuing? Because it doesn't seem to be much of a business model as yet. It is very difficult to see, and especially with the with free programs. I mean, the thing about when I was talking about cloud education, what I, I'm talking about business uh, business schools or universities generally working together to share programs um, between students. Um, but I can see a time coming when um, a, a student will be able to pick and choose. It could do a marketing program from Kellogg, for example, or it could do a finance pro program from Wharton, or it could do um, something on Asian business from, from NUS, and pull all those together um, to make a program. Um, you can do that if it's free. Um, you can do it, obviously, if you pay as well, but it's how you accredit those kind of programs. Because at the end of the day, I think people do want some sort of acknowledgement or credit um, for or degree for, for for their study, but I think also there, there's an interesting um, element about what corporates do in this market. Um, you know, if they require students, uh, require managers to actually look at different programs um, um, and and follow those um, as part of their career progression, uh, then. That, that market will absolutely take off. So it would be corporately driven as well as personally driven. I was at a conference recently in Europe and the marketing director of a European school said, who's running my school, Della Bradshaw or the Dean? So how, how do you regard um, those sort of comments? Um, that's a, well, it's a nice thing to say. However, um, I, I mean, clearly what we, we, I think rankings serve a purpose and I think that has to be kept in perspective. It, it is, they are very good indicators of how business schools are behaving at a point in time. Um, and I think prospective students should look at all rankings and, and, and take them into account. I don't think you should ever make a choice in business school based on solely on, on rankings. I mean, I think that would just be silly and that you wouldn't want those students anyway. Is there too much of a focus though on salaries within uh, the rankings? Because schools now seem to be trying to encourage students to perhaps think about alternative careers to finance, um, such as with an NGO or a uh, charity? Well, just on the financial thing, we do actually weight salaries um, because jobs, certainly in the past, in, in financial services have been higher than any other. So we weight the salaries so that um, that doesn't give um, a school like Wharton or NYU or, or Columbia a, a, an advantage. Um, I, I, are, are business schools trying to push um, their students into into um, NGOs and so on. I think I have a real problem with this argument. I mean, given the amount that business schools charge uh, students, especially for MBA, so you have um, that you know that the cost of doing an MBA, including your last salary, can be something like two hundred thousand dollars. Is that someone who's then going to go and work for um, a charity or an NGO? It is unlikely. Now, if you are um, a, 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 you know, a big business school, charging very, you know, I think we call them the luxury business schools in the conference, which is quite a nice expression. If you're a luxury business school, charging huge amounts of money, asking 
very well qualified people to give up their well paid jobs to come and study with you um, and incur a large amount of debt and lost salary. I, then I don't get the equation which says, and they're going to go work in an NGO or, or, or the not-for-profit sector. I, I, I don't think that's sustainable. So would you say then that um, business schools are serving the business world well? One of the things that always strikes me as quite odd in business, in business schools is that they never operate like a business. So you have a dean who tries incredibly hard to make the professors behave and the professors who do what they, do what they like. So um, the, the, the professors have loyalties which are very different. I mean, I remember one dean once explained it to me that she came into uh, business education from the corporate world and she said, in business schools, you know, the professor's first loyalty is to their research and to their research partners. And that research partner could be in any, in any other institution around the world. Um, the second um, uh, point is to their community. So if they were a marketing professor, their loyalty was to the marketing professors in, in, in other business schools. And then the loyalty to their own institution came very low down the, the, down the pecking order. And I think that's a really difficult uh, sort of structure um, when you then say, well, are these people actually serving, serving businesses? Because the deans and the professors are often pulling in different directions. Um, so I, I think the structure of business schools, particularly under the tenure system in the US, um, has to be um, looked at again if, if, if business schools are going to be um, you know, you know, doing what businesses need them to do. What would you like business schools to do? I think our job is to report. I think that is our job. I don't think our job is to actually um, influence the way um, people, people behave. But you are influential within uh, the business education sphere. Well, I think we are reporting across a set of data what is happening in the industry. Um, and schools go up and down our rankings depending on what they do, um, not according to what I think. Um, and, and that's how it will say. We rank a hundred programmes in our rankings. You know, these are the hundred top programmes in the world. And I think the schools are justifiably proud of that fact. When you think of the thousands and thousands and thousands of business schools out there, to be, there, to be ranked in the top hundred is actually pretty impressive. Della Bradshaw of the FT, thanks a lot for joining us. Lovely, thank you very much.